Okay, hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson brought to you by Everyday Seminar. Uh, today's topic is on the features of linear equations, okay? More specifically, linear equations in the slope-intercept form, okay? Y equals mx plus b. Okay, key terms for this lesson, um, we'll be using terms such as linear equations, slope or the gradient, y-intercept, uh, straight line, y-axis, coordinates, powers or exponents, polynomials, quadratic equations, and uh, cubic equations. Okay, first of all, what exactly is a linear equation? So here's a definition uh, provided today. A linear equation is simply an equation where the highest power of x is 1. Okay, x to the power of 1. Therefore, when you graph the equation, it comes out as a straight line. Okay, I have an example right here. So notice that the equations on the left are written in the most common format. And this format we call the slope-intercept form. So the general formula of the slope-intercept form is y equals to mx plus b. Okay, this is a linear equation where m is a slope, also known as a gradient, and b is the y-intercept, okay? So as you can see here, we have uh, two examples, two linear equations, y equals to negative x plus five, okay? So when you graph this linear equation, it comes out like that. Notice that there actually should be a, an invisible one there. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. And the other linear equation we have is y equals to half x plus two, okay? Now as mentioned here, the coefficient of x, okay, that number, is the slope of the gradient. Slope or also known as the gradient. So the slope of this red line is one half, okay? And the slope of this blue line is negative one, okay? Uh, another thing you should notice here is the y-intercept. So here the y-intercept will be that value, b. So this line will cross the y-axis at positive 2, okay, that's plus 2, and this will cross the y-axis at positive 5, and that point there is positive 5. Moving on, okay, um, graphing linear equations, okay, to draw the graph of a linear equation, we substitute any value for x in the equation, the general linear equation, uh, usually starting with 1, for simplicity purposes, then we find the corresponding y value. When you put the x value and y value together, you get what is called a coordinate, which is a point that can be found on the graph. Okay, let's have a look at this example. So the linear equation here, right on top, y equals to 3x take away 2. As mentioned before, we actually know that the gradient or slope is 3, and the y-intercept is negative 2, okay? So another way you can do this is you substitute values for x. Start off with 1, put 1 in the general formula, and then you get your value for y, which is 1. Uh, substitute negative 1, and your value of y will be negative 5. Substitute 3 into the general uh, equation, and your value for y will be 7. So if you put the x and the y together, you get points on a graph. These are called coordinates, okay? So one point here, we have uh, one, one. Our other point, we have a negative one, negative five. And uh, this third point, three, seven. So when we draw these points on a graph, you can rule a straight line crossing all the points. And this line will be the line for the, for the equation y equals three x minus two. Okay, shall we move on? Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about the slope now. The slope or the gradient, which is, uh, they commonly use the variable uh, m. It is simply the steepness of the line, a higher m meaning a higher, meaning a steeper line, okay, which would therefore mean that if m is zero, then it is a horizontal line. So the higher value of m, your line will look more like that. And as m approaches zero, it becomes flatter. 
if m is equal to zero, it'll be a straight line. Okay. If m is negative, then the line is declining from left to right. So if you have a negative coefficient before x, instead of going up, your line will go down. Okay. Um, what's the formula to find the slope or the gradient? Um, you may hear many terms, rise over run, the change in y divided by the change in x, or delta y over delta x. Okay. You can see here the rise divided by the run, change in y divided by the change in x, or delta y divided by delta x. Okay. Now, the other uh, key point, key feature of a linear equation is the y-intercept, okay, b. So the y-intercept is the point on the y-axis where the straight line of the linear equation cuts through. At the y-intercept point, the value of x is equal to zero. Therefore, y, as proof, if y is equal to mx plus b, if you substitute zero for x, you find out that y is actually equal to b, okay? Uh, let's look at this example right here. Over here, you can tell that the y-intercept is positive one, okay? Crosses the y-axis at the point zero, one. Um, you may also notice that the gradient is a half, okay? So this line, any two points, it'll go up by one and to the right by two, okay? One over two. The y-intercept here is positive 2, okay? And what we can also tell about this line is it has a positive gradient or positive slope as the line is going upwards. Um, another example here, for the line y equals 3x plus 5, here we can tell that the y-intercept is positive 5. Again, as mentioned here, um, at the y-intercept, the value of x is equal to 0. So at that point, the coordinate of that point is 0, 5, okay? Um, and last, linear equations in comparison with quadratic and cubic equations. Okay, what's the difference between linear equations, quadratic equations, and cubic equations? Linear equations are sometimes referred to as polynomials of the first degree. That is, the highest power of x is 1. Quadratic equations are therefore polynomials of the second degree. Okay, they're called second degree. And therefore, cubic equations are polynomials of the third degree. And so forth. You, have, uh, you can even have x to the power of 4. I think they're called quartic equations. And then x to the power of 5, x to the power of 6. As the highest power of an equation changes, so does the general shape of the graph, as can be seen below. Okay, here we have a linear equation. How do you know it's a linear equation? The highest power of x is one, okay? A linear equation, straight line. Quadratic equations, notice that the highest power of x is two, okay? And the general shape of a quadratic equation, kind of a curve like this, they call it a parabola, okay? And last, we have a cubic equation. These are very popular, I'm sure a lot of you are, are familiar with them in your high school syllabus. Cubic equations where the highest power is three, okay, the shape ends up looking like this, okay, and this is called a hyperbola. And in fact, if you have, a, a, say, a quartic equation where x to the power of four, it'll actually look like that, that, and then go back down again, okay, like a wave. Okay, so in our next lesson, uh, let's try out some problems. Let's see if we can apply what we've learned. Uh, thank you very much for today. Brought to you by Everyday Seminar.